Hello, this is Pastor Jeff Smith with Liberty Bible Baptist Church. I'm going to bring you a short video on what must a person do to be saved. Now, you might be thinking, well, a person has to do nothing. They don't have to do anything. And one of the famous verses that we like to use when we talk about a person just having to believe by faith, plus nothing, minus nothing, uh, that they might be saved is Acts 16.31. Uh, but Acts 16.30 brings us the question, you know, perhaps what he's asking here is what must I do to be saved from death? But well, that's generally not how it is preached or taught or believed. Uh, what we generally believe as Bible believers is that he is asking what must he do to be saved from eternal damnation? What must he do to be saved from hell? Perhaps he thought to himself that if he killed himself, as many think in the Catholic Church, if a person kills themselves, it's considered a sin that cannot be forgiven. Of course, once you kill yourself, you know, no sin afterwards can be confessed. So perhaps there's the thought that if he killed himself, it was certain eternal damnation. Um, but perhaps he's simply asking, what must he do to be saved from hell? Of course, at midnight, Paul and Silas are praying and singing praises unto God. The prisoners heard them, so why not the prison guards themselves? Perhaps what they're singing and praising God about uh, included the gospel that saved their souls. But it is generally believed that when the question is asked of sirs, what must I do to be saved, that their answer to that pertains to how a person is saved from hell. And the response is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Well, what was the question? Sirs, what must I do to be saved? What must I do? Now, Paul and Silas didn't say, you don't have to do anything. Uh, religion says do. The Bible says done. But they didn't reply like that. When he says, what must I do to be saved? The answer was, you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what you must do that you can be saved okay that's the question that's the answer what must i do to be saved so there is a work that a person has to do in order to be saved there is something that you personally must do to be saved you must believe on the lord jesus christ and of course the quick response to that will be ephesians 2 8 9 for by grace are ye saved through faith okay you don't have to do anything. You only have to believe. Well, the question was, what must I do to be saved? The answer was believe. So you do have to do something. You have to, you have to believe. And what it takes to believe is faith. So you're saved through faith. You're saved through believing. Now, this belief, this faith is a gift of God. God has given to every man uh, the faith required for salvation. It's what you do with that gift that is, open, uh, that is up to you. Whether you choose to uh, exercise the gift of God, whether you choose to um, put that faith, that gift that God has given you uh, back into the Lord Jesus Christ in believing uh, what he uh, has said, what his word says, unless you uh, believe, you're not going to um, be saved. And so it says not of works. So it is true. There is not works, plural, that an individual has to do to be saved. You don't have to continue to believe. You don't have to continue to do something. You don't have to continue to maintain your faith so that you can be saved. But you do have to have one-time faith, one-time belief in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and then you are saved forever. You are sealed unto the day of redemption. Once you are saved... Once you have believed by faith from the heart, then you are saved and you are guaranteed a home in heaven. You are guaranteed eternal life. Now, see, faith is a gift and um, eternal life is a gift. See, the Bible says in Romans chapter number six, for the wages of sin is death, uh, death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So eternal life is a gift. Faith is a gift, but you do have to do something in order to um, get the gift. 
you have to, as anybody knows, you have to unwrap it. You have to open it. You have to receive it. Okay. In this case, you have to believe it. That is what you must do. And as part of believing, as part of something that you must do to be saved, the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and God believe in the heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Uh, notice here how uh, Paul and Silas have uh, added unto Acts 16.31. And we know that we don't take any scripture of private interpretation. We don't build our doctrine off of one verse. Uh, as many of the uh, heretics do, they pick a verse and pitch a fit. As Bible believers, we ought not to do that. Line upon line, here little, there little. And so Paul to the Philippian jailer, who is uh, professing uh, to want to know what he must do to be saved, and them answering him, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Uh, we know, we believe there based on this thing here, confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And that's exactly what the Philippian jailer does, because then Paul uh, baptizes the Philippian jailer and his household shortly thereafter. So he says, uh, you must confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in the heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Uh, that is what you must do to be saved. That is the work that you must uh, put into salvation. Now, you don't have to continually maintain that work. You don't have to be continuously doing that work. It is a one-time deal. It is a one-time uh, reception of the gift of God by faith, believing and confessing with the mouth, calling upon the Lord. It's not a something you have to do continually, but it is something that you must do. It is a work on your part. God did all the work. He did the dying. He does the saving. Uh, he went to hell. He atoned for our sins. He paid the sin debt. Uh, he paid the ultimate price, the ultimate sacrifice for sins. There is no more sacrifice uh, for sins. Now, that's the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. But the work that you as a sinner must do is you must believe and you must confess the Lord Jesus. You must confess with the mouth, the Lord Jesus, what you believe, uh, whether that be in prayer, whether that be in thanksgiving, whether that be in uh, in praise to God. It is a, uh, uh, a confession from the mouth that comes out of the heart toward God, not towards man, but towards God. Oftentimes it's called a sinner's prayer, and I have no issue with calling it the sinner's prayer because at salvation, a sinner will call upon the name of the Lord in prayer or in praise for salvation. And you get that here in Romans chapter 10, verse 13. Again, line upon line, here little, there little. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now well, that's simple. Now we didn't start there, but you end up there. You get Acts 16, 31. They're the Philippian jailers calling upon the name of the Lord. He's saying, what must I do to be saved? They say, believe. You know what he does? He believes. He calls upon the name of the Lord. He gets baptized after his salvation. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? So you're going to believe from the heart. And if you believe from the heart, you're going to call. Nobody's going to call if they don't believe. And if they do call without believing, then they're not saved. And if they believe without calling, then they're not saved. It is two sides of the same coin for salvation. It is a belief from the heart and is a confession, a call with the mouth, the Lord Jesus. And here it says, you must call on him um, and uh, and be saved, having believed from the heart. And how shall they believe in him and who they not heard? Yeah, that's right. They can't believe on him if they don't hear him. How shall they hear without a preacher? You say, well, I don't, I don't believe that you have to do anything. I don't believe you, they're... Uh, there's a work involved. Well, John chapter number six, and of course, Paul already said what you must do. You must believe. He already said in Romans what you must do. You must believe and confess, believe and call. But John chapter number six, Jesus Christ says, this is the work of God. This is what God uh, says is a work that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. See that? There's a work of God that must be done. There's a work that must be done that you must believe. So if you don't believe that believing is a work, then you're calling God a liar. Because here we find that belief is the work of God. 
And that's what salvation is. Salvation is you believing, you calling upon the name of the Lord, and you'll be saved. No, no doubt about it. Now, works is a continuation of those things. And we're not saved by works, but we are saved by a work. We are saved by the work of the Lord Jesus Christ upon Calvary. And ultimately, that's the work that has to be accomplished. It's the work that Christ accomplished at Calvary. It's the work of God saving a sinner uh, from within, not without, but from within. And that's the ultimate work. But God expects you to do something in order to uh, trigger that work, in order to enable him to do that work. And that's believing from the heart and confessing with the mouth. We don't believe that man is saved continuously, that saved is that man is in the process of being saved, that man is uh, saved daily. And then at the end of his life, if he has more days saved than lost, then he goes to heaven. We don't believe that. All right. Now, uh, what you want to see is that in Romans chapter number two, this gives you the definition of of works that we're not saved by. Old Testament, they were saved by faith and works, a continuation of doing those things which are pleasing in his sight. In the New Testament, we're saved by a work, uh, through a work, all right, to him who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. See, there's a continuance uh, that an individual does in the Old Testament for salvation. In the New Testament, it's a one-time deal. It's one and done. It's a one-time faith. It's a one-time calling upon the name of the Lord for salvation. You don't have to do that thing continually. You only have to do from the heart and with the mouth once uh, for salvation. But uh, a man in the Old Testament had to do something continuously in order to get the glory, the honor, the immortality, the eternal life. Old Testament, under the law, a man had to continue in the law, a man had to continue to live in the law in order for him to maintain his self-righteousness. In the New Testament, a man does one work, one deed in his life that secures him a spot in heaven for all of eternity, and that is believing and calling upon the name of the Lord uh, that we might be saved. Uh, again, in Romans chapter uh, number 11, uh, he says, and if by grace, then is it no more of work? See, there was a time in the Old Testament where it was by works, a continuation of doing good, believing, and uh, doing a work. But in the New Testament, it is no more of works. It is of grace. It is of grace. Okay? And that grace is when a man believes in the heart and calls or confesses with his mouth what he believes. That by the grace of God, he saves that sinner forever. You don't have to continually uh, seek for, continually pray or do anything more than what he's already done. What he must do now that he's saved, 1 Corinthians 15, what he must do now that he's saved is be steadfast, and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. All right. So now that you're saved, uh, there is a work for you to do. It's not to stay saved. It's not to maintain salvation. Um, but we are his workmanship. See, God did the work in us. That work was enabled. It was enacted when we did the work of faith from the heart, believing, confessing. But we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. That's good works uh, for fellowship. That's good works for rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? So... The next time you hear a preacher say, you don't have to do anything to be saved, but you must believe. What he's saying is there is something you must do to be saved. You must believe. And if he leaves out Romans chapter number 10, uh, he's leaving out uh, the other half of what you must do. You must believe from the heart and confess with the mouth of the Lord Jesus. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord uh, shall be saved. Pray that you're saved today. If not, get saved before it's everlasting too late. And may God bless.